this candle is your confirmation candle. This is what I mean by a hold. So if we were inversing it, if this candle held above 3,900, you would exit. All of you have always asked, can you go over specific trades? Can you go over a strategy? And today I'm gonna do it with Mossy Trades because she's been on the show before and if you're curious who she is, you need to go check out the previous episodes where she's talked about her entire story. Great value there. And you need to check out her YouTube channel at Mossy Trades. So Mossy, could you go over the gap fill strategy on SPX with options? Yeah, of course. So usually um, on a day-to-day -day basis because you can't trade SPX after hours, it has no volume. You can't trade it after hours or in the pre-market. SPX tends to gap up or down depending on what the overall market did overnight. So okay. if the market fell, SPX gaps down. If the market uh, went up, SPX gaps up. Sometimes it won't gap at all because nothing happened in the market. So when it does gap, you'll see an area where there's really no trading. Some, if some people don't know what gaps are, you'll see an area where there's really no trading at all in between the stocks. So this is where it closed the day before, and this is where it opened. So it closed the day before at around 38.70. It gapped up all the way to around 39.02. So that means that if SPX uh, makes the move down, it could fill the gap all the way through. So that's the type of play that you want to take. So you would set your levels of support and resistance. I actually took this play on Tuesday, so I entered this position. My support level on SPX was 3,900. So that was the next level of support down below that gap. Sure. So I entered once it broke 3,900 on this two minute candle here. Mm -hmm. So it broke, held below 3,900. That's your confirmation candle to enter and the stock made the move all the way down into the end of the gap fill. I exited most of my position once it touched the gap fill at 9.04, 38.71. The good thing about gap fills and why they're high probability setups is because there's no trading in between where the pre-gap and post-gap level is, yeah. that means that the stock has room to make the move all the way down if it has the momentum and volume. So if the market gives it the momentum, it makes the move all the way down. Um, on the chart. So it's a really high probability setup and it's something that I apply almost every single day to my trading. So I have a couple of questions. I know people are going to be like, you know, I'm very curious on what makes you determine 3,900 as support and resistance. Very curious because I know that people are asking themselves that. Is yeah. it just based off of the pre-mark or the opening action or is it based off prior action? So right now this this uh, specific chart isn't charted with all of my support and resistance sure. levels, but uh, 3,900 was a previous level of support and resistance on SPX that has touched multiple times. Mm. And the 100 point and 50 point levels on SPX are what we call psychological levels. So those are, they tend to be take profit levels for investors. So your mind likes whole numbers. So usually around those levels, you'll see a lot of buying pressure or selling pressure um, to hold the stock up or down. So whenever you see 100 point or 50 point levels, they're always going to be significant levels of support and resistance. I want to take this time to say thank you to our sponsor, Cobra Trading. Cobra Trading is the go-to broker for day traders and short sellers. And I'm not the only one saying this. In fact, Benzinga awarded Cobra Trading as the go-to broker for short selling. They have a heavy focus on direct market access order routing, so you have the fastest execution. They have some of the best locate prices and availability. They also have amazing customer service. I've experienced many different brokers, and it's why I use them every single day and why I'm proud to have them as our sponsor. Sign up now by clicking the Be The Trader referral link below and earn one free month of software with Cobra and 25% off all commissions. Now let's get back to the show. When it comes to, you mentioned like because this candle, too many can't held under it, that gave you confirmation for you to take the position. Is there times where you'll take it before that candle does that? Yes, the only reason I took it, uh, I waited for confirmation is because this week is FOMC meeting. So uh, okay. whenever I have Fed meetings, I always like to be really careful with my trades and enter at the confirmation instead of the breakout candle. Gotcha, and so whenever you get in, let's just say you get in where you did exactly this play, are you risking like the prior highs or are you more so risking the what should act as resistance? So my uh, stop loss on this was the gap the uh, post gap level, which was 39.02. Uh -huh. Usually I set my stop at the previous level of support and resistance, so whatever I took. So I would wait for a hold, not a breakout, a hold above 39.02. You always wanna wait for it to mm. hold above the stop loss because what can happen is 
Uh, buyers try to push it up, sellers push it back down, and it wicks. It only breaks out, but it doesn't hold. So you can get shaken out that way. Well, so speaking about that, because if you, if you wait for it to hold, there's some people who might hear that, and because I was one of them, especially back in the day, and I'd be like, okay, I'll wait for it to hold. At first, I used to get out as soon as it hit it, and I'd get yeah. wicked. And I was like, okay, I'm not doing that anymore. I'm going to wait. Yeah. But then if you wait, there has to be, are you also waiting, but also have a max limit or a max stop somewhere in here where if it just wicks way the freak up there? Because sometimes it could just go before really showing you another two, three minutes of holding. Yeah. So usually you want to give it at least two price points up if it really moves. Yeah. To be honest, that doesn't happen. It's very rare unless there's significant news and True. usually you'll see the entire market make that move. So obviously get out as fast as you can because there's it's parabolic at that point. So nothing, price action doesn't matter. But for the most part, if you set your stop properly um, and you're taking a high probability setup, market tends to give it to you. But yeah, for sure I do have like my hardcore stop. And, the, and I'm, I'm also curious on when it comes to holding, what does that mean for you? Because, you know, you get in, let's say it goes back above the 3900 level. And if it goes back above that for just one two minute candle, does that mean it's holding for you? Like, what does that mean to you? So what I usually do, so if you set your level here at 3900, I would like to see one candle open above the 3900 level before I exit my play. That's what I mean open by holding. Above. Open oh, okay. above or open below. So you see this. Candle that I entered at, this eight, yep. uh, 946 around central time, candle, this candle held below my 3900 level. This previous candle is the breakout candle. This previous candle is the breakout candle right here at 8, 944. This candle is your confirmation candle. This is what I mean by a hold. So if we were inversing it, if this candle held above 3900, you would exit. And then if then, or if it held, or if it like, if it just went up a little bit above it and then the next candle opened above it. Yep. Then okay. You cool. exit. Yep. Now, but if it just broke out and then the next candle opens back below 3900, yeah. I'm still staying in. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. And that helps you stay in the move because things fluctuate. Markets don't just go straight down straight. It'll be nice sometimes when it does. Sometimes yeah. it does. Mm -hmm. But in some cases, it will get faked out if you do not think properly. Exactly. The last question I have before we wrap this up is and I is very is um are you always using the prior close if for the gap fills as your profit target or is it kind of uh like a a feel thing to you how do you use that so it depends uh i did have a profit target set at 38.90 and then my final profit target at 38.71 it depends on the size of the gap usually spx moves in 10 point increments mm -hmm. so depending on how big the gap is it could be 10 points 20 30 40 50 if it's a 50 point gap 40 point gap it's going to take it some time to fill it's not mm -hmm. going to you're going to have to scalp it as it makes it move down or day trade it um versus if it's only a 10 point gap one candle can fill the gap all the way through or two candles oh, okay so it really depends i do set if it's a bigger gap price points in between especially if i had previous levels of support or resistance or I'll check out futures, ES or the NASDAQ futures okay. and see where they have levels of support and resistance and base my price targets on that. But I always set two price targets in between a big gap. At okay. least, if it's <clears> at <throat> least 30 point gap, two price targets. I like that you said one thing that really stands out to me. You said that typically moves 10 points. Mm -hmm. That's something that people might just glance over, but like that's because you've watched this SPX over and over and over and you've tracked it uh, potentially and you know that how it acts. Exactly. How yeah. important that is that to you before you even like really start honing in and sizing up into a strategy. So there's a reason why I only trade like a certain like certain stocks and most people that have followed me know that there's only a basket of stocks and I rep, like repetitively only trade yep. them because I know how they move. I know like what price points they go to, what moves. I know like even though this isn't charted, I've memorized some of the levels that SPX has. Yeah. So I think it's so important to focus on just a couple stocks, really, really understand their price action, really, really understand how the strategy that you're applying applies to that stock. It becomes so much easier than trying to trade everything all at once. Well, look, thank you so much for today. I know people are going to get tons of value from this. If they have any questions, how can I learn more about you? Uh, you guys can follow me on YouTube. My handle is Mossy Trades. Perfect. Thank you so much, Thanks, Mossy. Alex.